we keep talking about the geopolitical different divides. Is it actually more complicated for you to do business in certain countries today than it was a year ago if you were sitting here with us? Yeah, I'd say it's more interesting and uh, there are more concerns, but there are also opportunities too. So it's really mixed. It depends on, on what country. When you you're say more about. interesting, China, for example. Yeah, well, businesses, of course, like certainty. And right now, there's not as much certainty as, as, as we would like. So there are a lot of discussions about that. We have a lot of customers talking to us about whether they should optimize their supply chains separately. There is also some hope that, uh, that the recent discussions could lead to some kind of conclusion by the March 1st uh, date. So we'll just have to see. Between China and the government shutdown, what are you worried about more? I assume China right now. Well, China is certainly going to have a bigger effect on Is the government the, shutdown going to gonna have an effect on you? You know, it, it is not having an effect on us now. Operationally, we are fine. There are no delays. We do get concerned, of course, about the people that going without paychecks, and uh, so we'd love to see right. that resolved. But we haven't seen it affect spending yet, but, uh, but that could happen the longer this goes on. I wanted to ask you about this. There's a comment from Fred Smith, uh, your competitor at FedEx, at the end of the year, and he made a lot of news saying this, uh, given their earnings, uh, said uh, that most of the issues that we're dealing with today are induced by bad political choices. I mean, making a bad decision about a new tax, creating a tremendously difficult situation with Brexit, the immigration crisis in Germany, the mercantilism and state-owned enterprise initiatives in China, and tariffs uh, that the United States put in unilaterally. So you just go down the list, and there are all the things that have created macroeconomic slowdowns. Do you agree with him? You know, we're going to let Fred's comments stay with, with Fred. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there are some things that we're very interested in. The trade policy is something that... Uh, that, uh, that we're spending a lot of time on Brexit, those kinds of things. But there's also been some, some good decisions that have been made. The tax uh, reform in the U.S., that was a plus. So, yeah, there are, are macroeconomic opportunities. There are challenges. And uh, it is our job as a multinational company managing our customer supply chains to show them areas that we can take advantage of, uh, of the situation. I mean, Fred was talking about bad political decisions globally. And, and, you know, it takes two to tango on all these issues. And, you know, the, the bad decisions politically as far as trade goes, you know, it's, it, it, where's the chicken and the egg? Did it start with our decision to finally, to finally uh, to, you know, confront China with a lot of the inequities? Or did it start with China when they decided to, you know, to, to run their, their Trade operations in a way that really isn't isn't fair to the rest of the world. So you know, I, I I see what Fred's saying, but knowing Fred as I do, that certainly wasn't an indictment of just what's happening here in our country. You know, our focus is not really on who may have started or who has exactly. initiated. We really want to see this. Brexit's resolved. not our fault, right, David? I mean, yeah, I I mean yeah. when it comes to China, you want to see it resolved. You want some long-standing issues resolved favorably. Addressed. Resolved more favorably it's, than it was. That's right. It's just that you worry a little bit about tariffs and counter tariffs right. and stuff like right. that. Talking about your competitors, uh, the president, President Trump, that is, has made a number of comments about Amazon and the Postal Service. Where do you land on that issue? Well, first we're talking, well, I'm not going to address the comments that President Trump has made on either one, but, uh, but when it comes to, to Amazon, they're a good customer of ours. We work together. They also, just like uh, many other large companies that outsource and insource, we do watch carefully the decisions. Are taxpayers being ripped off by Amazon because of the pricing structure that the Postal Service provides to them? We, That's the fundamental uh, question that, that I think American taxpayers want to understand. Right. And I'm not going to make a judgment on whether they're being ripped off. What I'm I sure will you've looked and you, thought about this issue. I have. And what I will tell you is that we first, we believe that the postal service, we need a healthy postal service for the U.S. We also believe that the prices that they charge for the package delivery should cover their costs. By definition, they don't. Yes, and we believe that there are monopoly revenues from first class mail that, right. uh, that are benefiting this. You can't and lose so $4 billion a year if you're pricing things that in, a, in a free market uh, system. You can't. And, it, it, it's subsidized. That's the only reason it stays in business. And by definition, that they're undercharging for a lot of things that they do. And we've been by consistent on the fact that, uh, that they should better allocate their costs and they should charge accordingly. 
And, uh, and so you agree with the president then? I am not going to tell you that uh, ripping off, so you're not going to get that. But uh, we do believe that they should uh, better allocate their costs and that they uh, should charge to cover their costs. Let's just talk about e-commerce in particular. We were talking in the commercial break before. I didn't realize that e-commerce is about 50 percent of your business. And during the month of December, it's 65 to 70 percent. That business is lower margin business than, than the rest of your businesses, right? Yeah, it, it is going to be a lower margin primarily because when you're delivering to businesses, you'd have multiple packages mm -hmm. when you're delivering to residential. So we're doing things to supplement that, uh, one, by the technology that we're adding to lower our costs. But two is what we call uh, synthetic density, where we help work with our customers to target multiple packages on a particular day to a customer, and then you can overcome some of those profitability. Of, of that e-commerce, how much of that is Amazon, would you say? You know, we do not break down uh, by customer. We will tell you that there's no customer that makes up 10 percent of our revenue. So that's what I mean. Is it is it a threat that Amazon is opening its own air freight hubs? Is that a big problem for you if they went their own way eventually with their own distribution? You know, a lot of what Amazon is doing is, is uh, moving supplemental inventory and and they do have planes, and they are, uh, they probably have a second day network that they're utilizing. But in order to have a next day network, you, it would take a lot more planes. And, uh, and so we believe we add great value to Amazon. And Let me ask you in a different way. Between, between UPS, FedEx, and the Postal Service, a, as they develop their own services, who do you think gets impacted the most of those three, yourself, FedEx, and, 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 and the Postal Service, in terms of less business overall, if they start taking on more of their own business? And you're talking about if Amazon starts taking on more of their yeah. own business. I believe that most people would think that the, that the Postal Service would, would be most affected by that. But, I mean, that would really Which be is always no, the, the reason I ask the question is I imagine that was your answer. And the great irony of this whole debate is if the, if the Postal Service is the one that's going to lose uh, the business, it makes the least sense because everybody says they're being undercharged. You'd actually go with the cheapest. You'd go with the people who you thought were actually giving you the cheapest price uh, mm -hmm. rather than the, the, than the more expensive. By definition, U.S. taxpayers are subsidizing the post office. Yeah. And I think you have to understand that much of what the Postal Service does for Amazon is the local delivery. Right. And that's probably the want. easiest thing yeah. to be replaced. So that's why I said that. Uh, can I just ask you another headline we just read a few minutes ago is that FedEx says it's, it's going to start offering voluntary cash buyouts to certain U.S. employees. Are you considering anything like that at UPS? You know, we are, have already done that as part of our transformation. And it was voluntary retirements for those who were retirement eligible. And we got a good take on that, and it allowed us to, to cut back on, uh, on some of our costs, that we can take those funds and then apply it towards technology, which is the key to our future. So we've already addressed that. Before we let you go, I wanted to just bring us back to the beginning of the conversation. And it revolves a little bit around China, but also around supply chains. You get involved now early on in supply chains as, as, you start, as, as companies start to think about how to get stuff places. In terms of the way this whole China conversation goes, how much business do you think, in terms of manufacturing supply chain, come back to the U.S. versus other countries? You know, it's going to be hard to, to put an actual number on it. I can tell you that a lot of our customers that are doing business in China are looking at other areas in Asia. And so I would believe that probably is, is a little bit bigger option. But there are companies that are, of course, looking to move back into the U.S., but probably will do so with automated facilities and a little bit different than maybe when they left. 